Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Well, hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders with Marketing Huddle. And today we have with us Terry Dean, who is the founder of My Marketing Coach. Welcome to the program, Terry. Glad to be here. Hey, so um, give us a little bit of a snapshot of your entrepreneurial journey. I'm certain that you've got a lengthy one, but uh, what led you to the world of uh, uh, running your own business and then uh, your marketing coach? Well, uh, I'm going to keep this short. We're going to do the quick, quick version. And that was I first actually heard about the Internet and created my first website way back in 1996. So a long time I've been online now. And I came from delivering pizzas for a living for Little Caesars. I had actually bounced around to a bunch of, bunch of dead-end jobs and before I came online. And I, just, I had tried like network marketing. I had tried direct mail. I had tried door-to-door sales, none of which worked for me at all because I couldn't sell at all at the time. And I basically heard about the Internet and heard a few success stories way back then, not a whole lot back then. Got online, uh, put up my first website. I actually bought licenses to a few like self-help type VHS videos. Again, we're showing that I'm a dinosaur (laughs) in online marketing, selling VHS videos. And really discovered back then the power of email. That was probably my first big discovery was as I built an email list, my income increased every month. And I pretty quickly, you know, got out of that job. That's not a big job to replace delivering pizzas, but I got you know, replaced that income pretty quickly within a, a month or two online and just started building up a list, selling those videos. And from there, I expanded out, created my own products a couple of years into it because people were asking me what I did, spoke at a lot of conferences, I've spoken at conferences all over the place about online marketing. And then I started... Co- I had one of the first internet marketing membership sl- sites in 1999-2000. And... I actually started coaching one-on-one with clients in 2006. I set up a new business in 2006 and started coaching clients. And I really enjoy that because that means I get to have my hands in all these different markets, way more markets than anybody could do on their own. I get to see the numbers from all these markets. I get to see results in all these markets. And I really love being behind the scenes for a bunch of pretty nice-sized businesses. Neat. Yeah, I think it's really interesting how when you think back from the early days, a lot has changed in internet marketing, but yet a lot has remained the same, which is we still communicate by email. We still do. And most of my clients, the majority of our income is still produced by emails that we send out. Yeah, I mean, I I think we can get distracted with all the shiny objects and the social medias, this and that. But there still is the people still rely on communicating by email. And if they communicate and consume information and content by email, then why shouldn't we uh, market by email as well? So what would you say some of the, the big takeaways for someone when you start coaching them with you know, how they approach their email communication so that it comes off being marketing but not as uh, annoying? Well, I have a, a lot. I end up talking to clients a lot about authority. I know you have the best selling book, Authority Selling. So we probably have a lot of connections here in what we do and some of the things we probably talk to about clients. So when I start speaking to a client and I want to improve the emails that they're sending out, I actually call it the authority architecture that we build up. And the authority architecture that we build up is, is there's multiple different pieces, and we don't have time to go into all of them right here, but a couple of the pieces that we always work into is we work into their origin story. What is the origin story that they have? Basically, that's why they started this business. What's the problem that caused them to start this business? A lot of times we can show the unique promise they have in their business behind that. We'll think about what their vision for the world is, what the vision is, what they want to change for their customers, what they see in the future, because you're going to find that customers and well, the big mistake that a lot of people make online with an email list is they fall into two different ditches. The first ditch is that they send out tons and tons of content and content's good, but content alone, I call it constipated content doesn't sell. Okay. Boring content that doesn't hook into your story that doesn't give people a vision and an inspiration doesn't sell. 
And then the other problem you have is people who just promote, 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 and that doesn't work either. The right mixture is to have a mixture where you have in your own personal story, you have that vision that you want to share with people. So when I send out emails, it's as much inspiration and relationship building as it is content. So it's really a mixture of all those together. Like another piece of the authority architecture is having a villain. And that villain doesn't necessarily have to be a person. It could be a villain that you fight against. For me, because of my audience and who I attract and who I help, one of the villains that I talk against are basically all the bright, shiny objects, the BSOs out there that people can fall into and make the mistake and wanting that quick, fast button to succeed when the reality comes back to success online comes from authority and building that authority in your market to a very tight niche market of customers. Yeah, and I think that uh, also requires the research to know who your true customer really is because part of the shiny object syndrome is feeling like you can be all things to all people. So the, the, the struggle, I feel, is a lot of people just wanting to sell, sell, sell to whoever because my product does X and anybody should want that. So where do you, where do you guide someone to uh, really help flesh out their target audience so that then some of these messaging and, and content marketing pieces fall on the right ears? Well, if you try to sell to everyone, you end up selling to no one in particular. That's a good way to think about it because a lot of people are they're trying to sell to everyone. You want to find who your ideal client avatar is. And I take it to this point. I'll have actually someone sit down and they'll describe everything that they know about their best customer. If somebody's been in business for a while, like they've had clients, it's really – it when I start – interviewing them, it becomes really easy to do this because I can describe, okay, who's your best customer? Let's talk about them. Let's talk about a couple of your best customers and let's figure out what they have in common. How about a customer that you've had that was a problem client? Most people who've been in coaching or have had clients in the past, they know at least one or two problem clients they've had. And so we could think about what you don't want. If you're just starting out, it's a little bit harder, but you can still, there's a lot of tools online you can look to find out more about your customers. For example, I love going over to Amazon, looking at reviews of books, seeing what people say that they like about books, what they don't like. You can find out things about what causes people to buy right there. I like going into Facebook's Audience Insights where you can find out a lot about, the again, the things that people like. The best thing of all that you can do is actually talk to customers. For example, if you're in an industry where there's any conferences or expos, go there and speak to people. Or like I was speaking to a copywriter recently, and he does a lot of health promotions. And he said he actually, because he writes health promotions, he will go over there and sit on that bench in front of Walmart's pharmacy and just talk to people there. And he gets a lot of knowledge there. And then he even mentioned another top copywriter in the health business who she actually will go to nursing homes and ask if she can visit with the people in the nursing homes for a while and just chat with them and just talk with them to get to know the customers because for the health markets, that's who they're selling to in the market. That is some real world, hardcore front lines research there. It it is. And you you get to know the customer because what you really want to come out is you want to come out with an avatar. And I even have my clients often go over to Google images because this is only going to be used by you. So we don't have to actually go get a royalty free image. The only person who's going to use, see this image is you and actually pull an image from Google Images and print it out and you know, write a little story about your ideal client. This is who we're going to write to, and we're going to write all of our emails to this person. For example, if I see an email and a client shows me an email, and at some point in time they say, you all or you, you as a group, we need to fix that. They need mm-hmm. to be writing the emails to that one person at all times. And we keep that in mind, so we keep our best client in mind with everything that we write and everything that we do. And, and there's no perfect way to do it where it's just 100% you know, conversions, but what are some of the tips and tricks for boosting conversions on anything? Because in reality, we're talking about emails at the moment, but at, on a website, on a landing page, on anything that you're using to elicit a response from a prospect, you've got to convert them from a not interested party to a partially interested party to hmm, tell me more. And that's a massive process. But what are some tips uh, along those lines? 
Well, see, I've done a lot of reviews where we did hot seats at conferences and they bring someone up and we need to review the website or review an email or something else and we need to do it pretty quickly. And over time, I developed and found that all the sites that I reviewed, if they were failing, it was always one of five different points. And so that caused me to create a really simple system. I'm simple. I like to break things down real simple. And I call it the golden glove. Okay, so the golden glove has five fingers on the golden glove. You're always going to have your hand with you so you can always remember these five fingers, what you're looking for. If your site isn't converting, if your email isn't converting, you're missing one of the five fingers. They are desperate problem. The desperate problem means are you speaking to a desperate problem in the audience and have you tightly niched your audience? That comes in too. So do you know who the audience is and what their problem is? That's the first part. The second part is a unique promise. Are you offering not only a promise, a benefit to them, but it's unique from the competition that stands out. We call it a unique selling position. I just like calling it a unique promise that stands out from the competition. Overwhelming proof. Are you providing proof that back up the promises? See, those three Ps work together. There's a problem. We have a promise that's unique for that problem, and we have proof that backs up that promise. And that proof could be case studies. It could be testimonials. It could be your own story. One of my favorite forms of proof online are demonstrations, especially like video demonstrations. The fourth finger is the irresistible offer. That's an offer that's worth considerably more than what you're asking. Even if we're, for example, asking people to opt in to our email list on our website, you still need an irresistible offer. Just saying, hey, sign up for my newsletter. People aren't going to do that. Nobody wants more email. Nobody wakes up in the middle of the night and say, hey, I want some more email. You have to have an irresistible offer, which means some type of lead magnet that we're giving. It might be a video that they want to watch. It might be a benefit-rich cheat sheet that you give them. There's something that they want because you're offering them a promise, and it's an irresistible offer. And then the final piece is a reason to act now because all of us, it's very easy for us to put it off, to procrastinate, to wait till later. And just as an example here, since we're talking about email, I'll, I do emails and I'll do promotions to my email list where I might be like a five-day promotion, five days for this special, and then ends on Friday. And I've had many times where I have what I call the heart attack curve. And the heart attack curve is where you only get like a few trickling sales on Monday and Tuesday, only a few sales come in. Then Friday, you have this huge flood of sales that come in like in the last three or four hours, mm -hmm. right before the deadline, which proves the, the reason. That I've had promotions recently where more than 80% of my sales came in the last six hours of the special. That's definitely a heart attack curve because I complained all week that my promotion didn't work to my wife and <laughs> secretly in the background that all of a sudden I get it works on the last few hours of the promotion. So you have to have a reason yep. to act now. So those are the five fingers and we can judge anything by the golden glove. You know, I've even, um, I, I think that scarcity is an interesting concept because I've even started seeing the countdown timers on websites where they're counting down, but there's no, if you look at it closely, there's no there's no um, reason for the countdown timer to be there. You know, it's not like this offer ends in this many. It's just a, it's just a timer because our, your mind starts thinking about that deadline and scarcity, and it, I guess the marketer is thinking, well, let's you know, let's throw it on there. You know, but I mean, there's a lot of things where actual scarcity is a thing where it says we can only take. 25 people into this group, and when we get 25, we're cutting it off. And then, then, then what I would say is, from an ethical standpoint, you better cut it off because if somebody, if you say this offer ends Monday night at midnight, Wednesday morning, if someone comes there, you better not be able to buy it, right? Have you seen that type of thing in in the campaigns? I, I definitely have. I uh, well, see, I one of the things I did. This is some years back, but one of the things one of the conferences that had me speak at regularly wanted to do is they wanted me to show the power of email, and I actually got up and on Friday. I would send out an email and we'd watch the sales in my shopping cart all weekend. And the best promotion I ever did produced ninety six thousand two hundred fifty dollars by Sunday. So just that's just one promo to my list, and you know, in front of a live audience and then people watching it. And it was interesting. We actually hit. We sold out because I had said there was only a certain number that we were selling. We sold out about 3 p.m. on Sunday, which means I had to – I immediately left. Cause I'm glad I wasn't on stage at the time. But I got to – they had me show it. And then the moment I showed it, I went off and changed off the site because, hey, the special's done now. Mm -hmm. It's over. Even though the people in the room were convinced, trying to convince me to keep it running. I like, no, that's the end of the special. And to prove that, how – powerful that was. See, I had done that multiple times because we had done it in front of conferences, and so that meant the deadline was Sunday each time. I had multiple people who emailed me on Monday saying, I missed out. I'll make sure to move faster next time. 
And that's exactly yeah. what you want to hear from your subscribers. And, and because you're actually now um, – giving them a reason to watch out for the next promotion, and they're going to read it a little closer because they realize you mean what you say. Yeah, and that's just something to keep in mind. If, you're, if you say that there's a deadline, if you say that there's an you know, end for the special, you need to keep that, whatever it is. Like I have coaching clients too, and I only take 20 clients, and I'm, whenever I offer, I do sell out. So my, my, those limited spaces sell out because I'm only going to take that limited number of spaces. You can't say that we only have 100 digital products to sell. Right, right. Because everybody knows you yeah. have no limit to the number of digital products yep. that you can sell. But you can still run a special. Like whenever I release a new product, I still have a first week discount special. So if you buy it by the end of the first week before Friday, you're going to get a discount off of it that most likely I'm not going to repeat that discount again on, when I launch it. And I will mention it. Or other times I've run a special to my list where I actually ran a name your own price special. That's an irresistible offer, which was one of my online digital courses. I let people actually name a price that they wanted, and the shopping cart would accept anything down to a dollar that they could mm -hmm. put in. And the interesting thing was with my list, the average average amount that people paid was $17 off of it, mm -hmm. off of that promotion. And I generated an awesome conversion rate to my own list. So that's, just take that in account. It actually generated a 27% conversion rate to my own list on the landing page with that type of promotion of name your own price. And in that one, see, so I had never done that promo before, so I didn't put a deadline on it, but I said, this is the first time I've ever done this. Might be the last time I've ever done this. I don't know. We're actually going to test it and see what happens. So if it changes by the time you get there, then I must have decided it didn't work well. Mm -hmm. Okay, that, that works so well. I've obviously, I've ran it a couple more times, but that's the scarcity is there. You can see I was being as honest as I possibly could. This is a test. We're going to see what happens and how long it runs. What do you think about, um, uh, I'm, I'm going to use the term future pacing, but in an email uh, follow-up series, uh, I've seen this come up many times where I respond to this positively, which is, you know, hey, um, tomorrow we're going to talk about X or be watching tomorrow. I'm going to send you this thing or I'm going to make this announcement. And like the email today might be, you know, two lines, but yet it's saying, hey, be on the lookout tomorrow. And I, I catch myself thinking, well, then just send it to me tomorrow already. Don't, don't tell me it's coming tomorrow. But I find myself, you know, having that curiosity factor. Is that, is that something that you have seen uh, works as well? It has. I've said it on specials, especially if I'm going to run a special like next week. I'll say, watch for the email that's going to be coming Monday at noon, for example. Uh, I do that when I do have coach. When I have a limited coaching slots, because I don't want, I have like a waiting list for people who want the coaching slots when they are available. And I will often email them. I'll usually take new clients on Monday, so I have all week to help them. We can schedule things in real quick for them. And so on Friday, I'll often email, hey, on Monday at 12 you know, noon, I'm going to send out the email. Last time I emailed it, it sold out in an hour and a half. Mm. So you look for the email. That's when you have it. And no, you can't join before Monday. Is <laughs> that I'll actually say if that in the email. It's something short like that. Other times, I will start a story, and we call it an open loop often, where I'll start a story in an email, and I will continue the story tomorrow. So I'll leave you at a cliffhanger, just like they do on TV shows, of something like, what are we going to do now? We get to that point in the story. What happens next? Like with the story I just told of the email, I'd say, okay, we sent out an email, and I was you know, sweating. What kind of numbers are we going to produce? And we'll talk about that to number, tomorrow, about exactly what happened. You know, and then I'd go into the rest of the detail the next day. So I've done open loops like that before in emails also. So I've done both, and they're both really effective. And then, of course – it all comes down to testing and seeing what works because I could send the exact word for word email to my audience that and get crickets and you are getting gangbusters. So it really does get down to how you've um, warmed up an audience or your tone with them or your positioning with them, all of that. Um, and, and I think it really does have something to do with um, consistency, right? I mean, too many times you talk to a business owner that goes, yeah, yeah, I send out a monthly newsletter. Well, first of all, what's in it and do people really want to read it. But then when you look closer, it's like it's quarterly. Uh, def definitely. It comes back to, again, have you built up authority with your list? Mm -hmm. are, are you the expert that has proven the list that they're going to listen to? And as consistency, I want every client sending at least one email a week. That's like the minimum, no mm -hmm. matter what type of business you're in. Is That's the minimum is one email a week. A lot of clients send several times a week or even up to daily. 
And I found that we can produce, you can produce very effective sales, even with like a daily email that you're sending out, if you're doing the other things that we're talking about, which means you're giving people content, you're telling stories, you're having some fun with it, and you have a personality in your email, like you just mentioned, which is what they kind of expect from you. I mean, I I tell people my life, my, my list knows that I have a German Shepherd puppy that's six months old. They, they've heard stories about him for the last four months that I've had him. They know that I was sick with the flu last week because I mentioned it in one of my emails. So there's like a running story. They know you. They know what you're doing. And I also tell stories of things I've done with my clients, things like that. So it's, it's not just content. There's also a relationship. I always think, tell people to think about email as you're sitting down to a business lunch with somebody. And anything that might come up in that business lunch, you know, your personal life, your family, or anything like that, that it might come up in a, in a business lunch, that should come up in your email at some point, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a great point. Hey, I think we could uh, continue talking for about another hour and a half. So let's uh, wrap up with uh, where could people learn more about yourself, your business, email tips and marketing tips, and uh, what's the best way that they can interact with you? Well, the, they can find more out about, about me at mymarketingcoach.com. That's mymarketingcoach.com. I have a free report there on seven unique ways to create profitable emails, even if you're not a writer. In addition, at mymarketingcoach.com slash sell, I have my new book that I recently released, How to Sell Without Selling, the step-by-step marketing formula to attract ready-to-buy clients, create passive income, and make more money while making a difference. Excellent. Well, Terry, thank you so much for your time. It was wonderful getting to know you and exchanging some neat ideas. Well, thank you. You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.